Hello, and welcome to this FincoTech webinar. My name is Matthew, and I will be your Global Spec Moderator, and I want to review a few housekeeping items with you before we begin. Please take a moment to familiarize yourself with the operation of the user interface for today's webinar. The windows with the heading Presentation are the primary windows for today's webinar. On the right side of the screen, you will see the Speaker Bio window with background information on today's presenter. Below that is the Q&A window. At any time during the presentation, you can enter a question into the box in the lower section of the window and click Submit. Your question will be placed in the queue to address when we get to the Q&A session. At the bottom of the screen, you will see additional buttons to enhance your webinar experience. To see what a particular button does, just place your mouse pointer over it and a tooltip will appear with a description of the button's function. Now I would like to introduce today's presenter. With us today, we have Dr. Michele Portigo, the Senior Product Marketing Manager for VincoTech. To read more about Dr. Portigo, please look at the speaker bio window right next to the main presentation window. And Dr. Portico, welcome to today's event. And with that, I will pass things along to you to get started. Hello, and welcome everyone to the webinar called Embedded Solutions Drive Tomorrow's Designs. In this webinar, we will discuss the challenges in the design of embedded drive systems and find out how Vincotec can support in addressing these challenges. Then we will explore the power solutions offered by Vincotec for embedded drives with a special focus on highly integrated topologies like PIM with interleaved PFC and intelligent power modules and discover how these solutions can fulfill the demand for higher efficiency and reduced space occupancy. Finally, we will conclude the webinar with a summary of the key benefits in using Vincotex solutions for embedded drives. Since years, the major trend in the industrial market is towards higher integration and more complex subsystems aimed to increase the power density and reduce the cost of the final application. To this end, embedded systems in motion control integrate drives and electric motors in the same case to reduce the space occupancy while delivering the same power or higher. Embedded drive for motion control stands for simplified integration enhanced performance and faster time to market. Depending on the power range of the application, many of the modern fans, pumps, heat pumps, air conditioning systems and the like are designed as embedded drives. Now, let's have a closer look at the key requirements of a design for embedded drives and how we can fulfill such a demand. The ultimate goals of embedded designs for motion control are an increased power density and a reduced cost of the application. These goals are fundamentally achieved by reducing the size of the system and increasing the level of integration by comprising more and more functions in such a small space. Of course, this leads to the need of reducing the heat generated as the smaller size of the system features a reduced dissipation capacity. To this end, increasing the efficiency of the electronics in the system is a pivotal design step. Now, let's see how Vincotec can help properly address such needs. The appropriate answer to such a demand is a higher level of integration of the power solutions needed to drive the electric motor in such systems. This makes it possible to compress all the necessary functions into a small space and thus support the design of more compact systems. In this respect, it is necessary to develop technologies that allow the integration of a large number of electronic components in a compact package and possibly to employ single module solutions. 
Vincotech employs advanced technologies that enable the integration of complex circuits such as PFC, gate drivers and PFC controllers in a limited space. Additional functions are offered through the integration of shunts, bootstrap circuits, thermal sensor and onboard capacitors. Moreover, as mentioned already, a key point in achieving the above mentioned goals is that all the mentioned functions are integrated in a single package in order to reduce space on the end system and reduce costs at the same time. A key aspect of the design and development of such solutions with a high level of integration is, in addition to the electrical functionality of the power module, their thermal performance. To meet this requirement, Vincotech has developed new technologies that significantly improve the thermal performance of the power modules and, therefore, of the entire application. The integration of the well-known interleaved configuration for the PFC circuit and the use of the thin ceramic substrate contribute to a high improvement in thermal performance, especially as regards the ability to dissipate the heat generated by the electronic components in the module. In addition, we have developed a new technology for the housing manufacturing called Vinco Press, used in the latest generation of packages such as Flow S3 and Flow E3, which allows a considerable increase in the thermal performance and therefore the development of modules capable of delivering higher power. Last but not least, Vincotech can rely on a wide selection of the latest chips and passive components as a chip independent company and on well established technologies such as the thick film technology to integrate a large number of functions in a single package. That said, let us now explore Vincotech's extensive product portfolio, specifically developed for embedded drives applications. The portfolio comprises power modules for single phase as well as three phase systems. As far as single phase systems are concerned, the offer includes PIMS with a single leg PFC integrated in the compact Flow 0B and intelligent power modules in Flow 1B mainly for low powers up to 2 kW. As we will see later, our IPMs utilize the well-established thick film technology to integrate gate drives and other features such as bootstrap circuitry and shunts. Applications up to 4 kW can be addressed with pins with a single leg PFC in Flow 0 and Flow 90, employing either MOSFETs for higher performance or IGBT for cost-effective solutions in the PFC circuit. Silicon carbide components are also used in such families aimed to increase the conversion efficiency. A special mention here is reserved for the space-saving housing called the Flow 90, which enables 90 degrees mounting between heatsink and PCB. An additional step in the power is realized by our latest generation Flow 1 PIMS that integrate two-leg and three-leg interleaved PFC respectively in combination with a six-pack for motor inverter and can be used for applications up to 8 kW. Finally, three-phase applications are addressed with the 1200 volt intelligent power modules in the Flow 1B and Flow 1C with powers up to 6 kW and with the latest generation products employing innovative PFC topologies such as advanced neutral PFC for powers up to 6 kW and current synthesizing PFC for applications up to 12 kW in Flow 1 and Flow S3 respectively. As you can see on the bottom side of the slide, Vincotech has a wide offering of housings for powers ranging from few hundreds watt 
up to 15 kilowatt with different mechanical designs aimed to fulfill various requirements for the end system design. Now, let's take a look at the new interleaved PFC product family. Vincotech offers four different product subfamilies, which include PIMs with a two-leg PFC with and without input rectifier, PIMs with a three-leg PFC, and PIMs that integrate totem pole PFC for increased conversion efficiency. All products in the family are equipped with high-speed components in the PFC for switching frequencies up to 100 kHz, integrated motor inverter, and a thermal sensor for heat sink temperature measurement. The modules with interleaved PFC are also equipped with a shunt system that includes a common shunt as well as leg shunts and onboard capacitors. The thin aluminum oxide ceramic substrate enables a reduction in the thermal resistance and thus an improvement in the thermal performance of the power modules. Now, let's have a look at the key benefits of these solutions. First, the interleaved configuration in the PFC allows for improved thermal performance due to the fact that the PFC is split into two or three legs. This leads to a better heat spread because the components in the two phases or the three phases of the PFC occupy a larger area on the substrate than in the case of an equivalent single leg PFC. In addition, as known from the state of the art, the interleaved configuration decreases the input current ripple, allowing for a reduced EMI filtering on the PCB. A key feature of these products is the integrated shunt system. This system allows the current in the two legs of the PFC to be properly balanced by comparing the measurement of the total current injected into the PFC through the common shunt with the measurements of the currents in the individual legs of the PFC through the leg shunts. In this way, it is possible to ensure that there is no current overload in either leg, and thus it is possible to optimize the life cycle of all the PFC components in turn. In addition, the onboard capacitors significantly reduce the voltage overshoot, as shown in the figure on the left. Finally, a special attention is paid to the layout and the pinout of these modules. The layout is optimized in order to achieve the best possible thermal performance by properly separating the various module blocks, while the pinout has been carefully defined in order to ease the routing on the PCB. As it is visible in the figure on the left, all the power pins are located on the edge of the module, enabling an easy routing with a minimum number of PCB layers. Previously, we have discussed the use of thin ceramic substrate to improve the thermal performance of power modules for embedded drives. This slide shows an analysis carried out by our engineers that shows how thin ceramic leads to a reduction in thermal resistance, namely the RTH, and thus to an improvement in the thermal performance of the module. This figure shows several scenarios involving the layout of power modules with different sizes of copper area, depending on the density of the chips in the module. The analysis has been performed for two different chip sizes, 10 square millimeters and 35 square millimeters respectively. As can be seen from the figure, starting from the left, the reduction in the RTH in the case of thin ceramic substrate compared to standard thickness ceramic becomes more and more significant as the copper area is reduced around the chip and thus as the layout becomes denser. In the case of one millimeter of copper area, and this is the case for dense layouts such as the modules based on PIM with interleaved PFC topology, 
that we are presenting in this webinar, the reduction in the RTH is up to 17% for chips with a relatively large area, thus resulting in a significant improvement in the module's thermal performance. We have also developed an evaluation board specifically for the PIM with the three leg interleaved PFC, which allows the power module to be evaluated without the need to design and build a dedicated PCB. The board comes with an application note that explains in detail the operating principle and the main settings for correct and immediate use. In addition, we also provide the complete schematics of a PCB hosting this type of power module. This design can be used by driver manufacturers as a starting point for their PCB design or used as is. For more information on the board and the related material, I invite you to visit the Vincotec website. So far, we have discussed the Vincotec's products for single phase systems for embedded drives. Let us now take a look at products addressing three phase applications. Here, Vincotec offers a range of unique products based on innovative topologies and technologies. This slide shows the module in Flow 1 integrating three PFCs and a six pack for the output stage. A thermal sensor for temperature measurements completes the module architecture. The topology called the three phase advanced neutral PFC offers several advantages over conventional PFCs for three phase systems based on standard topologies. In particular, as shown in the bottom left figure, the module offers up to 35% space reduction and up to 30% cost reduction compared to traditional solutions requiring two separate modules. This module is ideal for compact designs that require high power density. The use of silicon carbide components allows the PFC to be operated at switching frequencies as high as 150 kHz, thus enabling a reduction in the size of the filter on the PCB and, therefore, a decrease of the overall system level cost. In addition, the use of the thin ceramic substrate offers significant advantages in terms of thermal performance, as we have seen before. Current synthesizing PFC is a unique and innovative topology recently developed by Vincotec for addressing the three-phase systems. This product integrates a three-phase rectifier, a three-phase PFC and a motor inverter for applications up to 12 kW in a single package. The unique architecture of the module allows the use of several low-frequency and low-current rating components drastically limiting the cost of the product. As shown in the slide, thanks to this particular architecture, the cost of the product is reduced by up to 25% compared to an equivalent product based on more traditional PFC topologies in a single module. In addition, there are further cost reductions due to the fact that it is possible to use fewer and smaller inductors on the PCB. Furthermore, no large electrolytic DC link capacitors are needed here, leading to even more system level savings. The thin ceramic substrate and the use of an innovative technology in the manufacturing of the Flow S3 package called Vinco Press, allow a significant improvement in the thermal performance of the product and, therefore, the possibility of obtaining more electrical power from the module itself. For more information on Vinco Press technology, I invite you once again to visit our website. Last but not least, up to more than 99% conversion efficiency is achieved thanks to such a special architecture utilizing silicon carbide components as well. 
Again, we have developed an evaluation board for current synthesizing PFC that allows the user to test the module in various configurations without the need to develop his own board. As usual, the board comes with an application note that explains in detail the principle of operation and provides guidance on settings. The hardware consists of three parts, the three-phase current synthesizing PFC converter, a booster converter, and the six-pack inverter. So far, we have seen the Binkotec offering for a single-phase and three-phase systems for embedded drives consisting of power modules that integrate a converter, a PFC, and inverter based on the DCB technology. One particular type of product that Vincotech has been offering for years employs the thick film technology to increase the level of integration in the single module, particularly by also allowing the assembly of gate drivers and, in some products of the family, the PLC controller. These products, called intelligent power modules, integrate a converter, PFC, and inverter. With this technology, it is also possible to print shunt resistors on the ceramic substrate that achieve high levels of precision through laser trimming. Thanks to this technology, Vincotex Flow IPM families show the highest level of integration among the power modules currently available on the market and allow reducing dramatically the overall system size, cost and time to market. Let us now take a look at the IPM product portfolio for single phase systems. Vincotech offers a wide range of products that integrate input rectifier, PFC with a gate driver or a controller, and an inverter with a six channel gate driver. The PFC is also offered with a silicon carbide boost diode for switching frequencies up to 150 kHz. In addition, the output stage, besides the gate driver, also integrates a bootstrap circuit for the power supply. As I said before, shunt resistors are printed on the ceramic substrate, allowing for a full model control. These products are complemented by a thermal sensor for temperature measurements and are offered in a compact Flow 1B package. Again, an evaluation board is available to test all the modules in the 600 volt IPM family together with an application notes document. Vincotex offer of intelligent modules also comprises the 1200 volt IPMs for three phase systems. Here too, the thick film technology employed allows a higher level of integration. Three two-channel gate drivers are used to drive the six IGBTs in the motor inverter, while an input rectifier, a thermal sensor, and the printed shunt resistors complete the module architecture in Flow 1B. A special mention here is reserved for the IPM in Flow 1C, which in addition to integrating the circuits and components described above, also includes a brake chopper with its gate driver for an even higher level of integration. Now, we have come to the end of this webinar, and I would like to summarize the key points discussed. As we have seen, embedded drive solutions for motion control simplify integration, enhance performance, and speed up time to market. Vincotex motion control solutions for embedded drives are built on more than 25 years of experience developing power electronics solutions for public grid-connected motion control applications. Combining speed and flexibility, Vincotech can help design and develop applications that meet the power range and design specifications of embedded drives. Vincotex one-stop power solution offering for complex motion control application 
includes application-specific power modules, such as a 600 volt PIM with PFC, 1200 volt PIM with three-phase PFC, and intelligent power modules. As a chip independent power module manufacturer, Bimcotech can build solutions around all chips on the market, offering the best compromise between cost and performance. I would like to thank you for your attention and remind you to visit our website for more information on the products and the technologies discussed in this webinar. Thank you so much for that great presentation. In a moment, we're going to move into the Q&A session. So to the audience, if you haven't already submitted your question, you can still do so now by entering that information in the Q&A box and clicking Submit. I also want to mention that um, Dr. Portico had mentioned the website a couple times during the presentation. So in the resource box on your screen, there is a link you can click on uh, to access the site there with more information. And along the bottom of your screen, there are a few options to reach out to the team uh, and contact us for further information. Uh, so we um, ask you to do so if you would like. Okay, let's get into the questions. Here is our first question for today. How do you see the use of silicon carbide components in embedded drives? Dr. Portico? Yeah, yeah and actually that's an interesting question. Um, as we know, the silicon carbide components are becoming very popular, especially in some sectors and applications like automotive and the PV solar. Uh, they offer a great advantages in terms of efficiency, actually they show quite low power losses and are smaller than the corresponding silicon component. And from this point of view, they could contribute to a further reduction in the size of the systems for embedded drives. So actually not only the size of the component itself, but also the low power losses as mentioned before, can uh, greatly help make the embedded drive designs more and more compact. However, uh, to date, these components are still significantly more expensive than the silicon components, which currently limits their use to high-end applications in motion control. On the other hand, um, as the cost of these components decreases, we can expect that there will be an increasing demand of uh, silicon carbide components in motion control as well, and in particular in embedded drives thanks to the major benefits they offer, as we have just uh, mentioned. Excellent, thank you very much for that. And thank you to the audience member that sent that question in. Uh, we have a lot of good questions in the list, so we're gonna get to it in a moment. But again, you still can send us your question or your comments. You can add that to the Q&A box and click Submit. Now here's our next question. Do you see any chance to operate PFC at FSW higher than 100 kilohertz? Oh, yes, for sure. I mean, it's possible to operate the, the PFC at uh, higher frequencies uh, while keeping, let's say, good performance by using a MOSFET uh, and the silicon carbide boost diodes in the PFC itself. In this case, the switching frequencies um, can go up to 200 kilohertz, basically, here. Uh, in our product portfolio, in Vincotec product portfolio, there are several par numbers with these uh, characteristics. Uh, some of them are based on the PIN with PFC uh, topology in uh, standard VCB uh, technology, and also IPMs, intelligent power modules, as I showed in the webinar. Excellent. Thank you for that. And now here is our next question from the audience. The shunt system in PIM with interleaved PFC is something new in the market. Do you foresee a wider use of such a feature in power modules? Yeah, actually, um, this feature is uh, useful with uh, a view to optimizing the performance and the reliability of the module and then of the, of the final application, the overall application. The ability to to balance uh, the, the currents in the two legs of the interleaved PFC is uh, essential 
to ensure a uniform use of the components in the in the PFC and therefore to optimize the life cycle of the entire product. I think that this function is absolutely crucial in applications uh, such as embedded drives where uh, performance, uh, thermal design and reliability are key points in their design and development. Yeah. Excellent, thank you. Okay, now here's our next question. How does ANPFC and CSPFC fit Vincotech's product strategy and what would be the key difference at system level? Hmm, that's a good question. <laughs> Actually, as we have seen in the webinar, um, ANPFC and CSPFC are two innovative topologies for three-phase PFC. Uh, when we compare them to the standard topologies, like for instance, VNR rectifier, the ANPFC shows better performance in terms of efficiency, while the, the, the costs are basically comparable. I would say they are in the same range. Moreover, the ANPFC requires a standard control strategy at the PCB level. I mean a control strategy that is uh, commonly used in motion control applications. On the other hand, the current synthesizing PFC offers greater cost advantages as highlighted in the webinar, but requires a dedicated control strategy. So at the end, it's, it's up to the end user to decide which way to go. I mean, from our side, we offer both. Uh, very good, thank you. Okay, and to the audience, um, we have, looks like, some good questions left to go, so we're going to keep this going, but uh, you can still send us your questions. If you have anything left, you can enter that information in the Q&A box. We would love to hear from you, even if you had a comment. And again, as mentioned, uh, there's some resources on the screen. You can follow up, you can access the website, and then along the bottom of your screen, there are some buttons. One of those buttons is to reach out and contact the team, and we encourage you to do so to keep that conversation going. Okay, back to the questions. Here's our next question from the audience. For embedded drive, uh, embedded drives applications, discrete components have been widely used. What kind of advantages do a power module solution can bring compared to discrete based solutions? Yeah, actually, as we know, a power module provides a, a very compact uh, solution that fits uh, perfectly with the requirement for uh, high integration in uh, embedded drives applications. This is what we have discussed in the, in the webinar, basically. Additionally, a power module solution offers optimized commutation loop, higher component integration, and uh, better thermal performance. So we see many advantages of using power modules over the discrete solutions, especially for such highly compact designs uh, uh, like the ones for embedded drives, actually. Excellent, thank you for that. Okay, and now here's our next question. Can the CSPFC system achieve the same THD level as defined by IEC 61000-3-2 standards, um, and in parentheses, a THD below 5%? Yeah, that's a, that's a really interesting question. Um, the point is, I, I would say yes. So the, the CSPFC converter achieves THD below 5%. Actually, the product has been designed to achieve such low THD level at any load condition, because in this case, what is important is also the, the, the load condition, basically. Um, since we are talking about a, a, a deep, uh, let's say, a technical stuff, if you want to get more information on this, I invite you once again to check the page on, on the embedded drives on our website. Over there, you you can find uh, dedicated articles, uh, dedicated presentation on this topic with all these technical details, actually. Oh, that's great. Very good. And we definitely encourage the audience to follow up there. Okay, looks like we have a handful of more questions, so we're going to keep this going. But again, to the audience, if you have anything left, please enter that information into the Q&A box and click Submit, and we'll try to get to your question. And if we don't get to your question, for whatever reason, we will reach out after the webinar is over. Now here is our next question from the audience. Um, 
Binko Tech has products based on NPFC modules as well. What is the difference between NPFC and ANPFC? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say the main difference is the voltage rating of the freewheeling diodes used in such topologies. In the NNPFC, uh, 1200 volt freewheeling diodes are used. Instead, the ANPFC makes use of 650 volt freewheeling diodes. And as we know, the 650 volt diodes are faster they have less losses and a lower cost than the corresponding 1200 volt uh, diodes. On the other side, if you look actually at the, at the schematics and uh, topologies, uh, these two topologies, the ANPFC shows a higher number of components compared to NPFC. So all in all, we can say that uh, the ANPFC features better performance in terms of efficiency, of course, than the NPFC at a comparable cost. So we can say the costs are, are basically in the same range. Very good. Our next question seems to be following up a bit there, and here it is. Um, while looking at the schematic of the ANPFC, it seems that the top topology is more complicated than the NPFC. Can you comment on that, please? Uh, yeah, this is what I mentioned earlier, actually. Um, so the, the, the ANPFC uh, can be uh, seen as a modified version, I would say an improved version of NPFC. The topology can be operated with the same PWM pattern as the NPFC. But actually, the overall behavior, the, in the overall behavior, there is no, no difference between these two topologies, I would say. But that's right, the ANPFC has more components. Uh, the 1200 volt freewheeling diodes in the NPFC are replaced by the 650 volt fast silicon diodes with a rectifier diode in series in the ANPFC. Uh, the fast diode acts as a freewheeling diode and the rectifier diode ensures enough voltage blocking during the opposite sign half wave. Even with a higher bomb count, the ANPFC is comparable in cost, as I mentioned before, and due to the more efficient uh, use of the 650 volt uh, diodes is better in performance when compared with uh, an NPFC. Very good, thank you for that. Okay, and to the audience, looks like we have a couple more questions in the queue, so we're gonna get to those in a moment. Uh, but now would be your last opportunity to send in any last questions or comments. And again, you can add that information to the Q&A box and click Submit. And as mentioned, if we don't get to your question for whatever reason, we will reach out after the webinar is over. Okay, now here's our next question. Uh, you write about the benefits of CSPFC topology about fewer and smaller inductors. Could you provide more details on that? Yes, I would say this is a key point of this uh, uh, innovative uh, topology we, we are proposing. Uh, this topology uses uh, constant power control, which makes it possible to eliminate line inductors and energy storage in the DC link. Only one inductor is required that uh, injects the third harmonic current into the mains via the half bridge MOSFETs. The peak inductor current is only half the amplitude of the input current. In addition, the, the, the switching frequency of the half bridge can also be up to 100 kilohertz. So these two factors enable to size the inductor significantly smaller than in the state-of-the-art topologies, like for instance the NPFC we have mentioned before, where the inductors have to handle the full input current. Another point here is that uh, the, the booster stage uh, in this topology is optional and can be added if a constant output voltage level is required. And without this booster stage, the cost advantage of this solution compared to a more traditional one, as also shown in the webinar, is even higher than the one showed in, in the webinar. Wow, great stuff, thank you for that. Okay, looks like we have one last question in the queue, so we're going to get to that 
in a moment, but to the audience, now would definitely be your last chance to send in any last questions. So go ahead and do that if you have anything left. Uh, but for now, here's our last question for today. How big is the capacitor bank in the CFPFC topology? Yeah, as mentioned also in, in the presentation, uh, there is actually no need for energy storage here. Uh, a film capacitor of few microfarad is sufficient in this topology. But anyway, also in this case, I invite you to, to have a look at, uh, at, at our website, and over there you can, you can find uh, uh, articles and presentations on this topic as well. Excellent. And as mentioned, you can find that link in the resource box on your screen. Okay, well, that was our last question, so we're going to move to wrap things up right there. Uh, so, Dr. Portico, thank you so much for that wonderful presentation and also taking the time to answer some questions from the audience. And, of course, we'd like to thank our audience members for being part of this webinar event. Uh, at, uh, you will be receiving an email from us with a link to the on-demand version of this presentation, so you can come back and watch this again or share it with your colleagues. And lastly, please take a moment to complete a survey which will appear on your screen at the end of this live webinar. For on-demand viewers, you will find the survey located along the bottom of your attendee console in the survey widget. Again, thank you for taking the time to attend this webinar event. Take care, and we will talk with you soon.